This is a spindle cell lesion on the scalp. It goes, you can see the thin epidermis, the whole dermis, and subcutis, all the way down to the galea aponeurotica is replaced by spindle cells. From low power, you should right away think of the diagnosis once you've seen a few of these. The, you can see there's fat that's been totally replaced by, by tumor. And look at these lymphocyte aggregates. Spindle cells with a slightly bluish myxoid background on the scalp with lymphocyte aggregates. Looking closer, we see scattered pleomorphism. Again, the lymphocytes. And look, if we're lucky, we'll find some mitoses if you have a big enough sample. But sometimes they're very sparse. Putting all that together, this is desmoplastic melanoma. These are very treacherous lesions because they have a lot of collagen and myxoid material that separates and spaces out the individual melanocytes. Only a subset of the melanocytes has pleomorphism or atypia. Some of them look very small and bland. Pretty much all the spindle cells you're seeing here are actually melanocytes. Maybe a few fibroblasts mixed in. But it can be really, really hard sometimes because they can be bland and they're not very cellular. So you have to have a high index of suspicion when you see something that looks like a scar but has atypia or has mites or has lymphocyte aggregates or they are on sun damaged skin and there's not a good reason for them to have a scar there, always think of Desmo. These are relatively rare, but they're out there and they're really, really easy to miss. Look at that. That's a desmoplastic melanoma right there. The top of one very similar to the one I showed you from low power. So beware of the apparent scar on sun damaged skin. If you start seeing hyperchromasia, do an S100 or a SOX10. Okay. They can also look very wavy and neural. They can look so much like neurofibromas. And in fact, desmoplastic melanoma versus a neurofibroma with scattered degenerative atypia is, to me, one of the most challenging spindle cell differential diagnoses in derm path. And I'm speaking as a, someone who also does soft tissue pathology. I find them very hard to to separate out. Immunostains are not terribly helpful there. Um, so if you see what looks like a neurofibroma on sun-damaged skin, which I see them regularly in older sun-damaged people, but if you start seeing atypia, be very careful. Look around. If you find even one mitosis in something that looks like a neurofibroma and it's on sun-damaged skin, you should really think twice because mitotic activity is very, very low in neurofibromas. So mites are going to be your most helpful clue, or if you're lucky, you'll find a melanoma in situ component. Now here's a desmoplastic melanoma that did have melanoma in situ, but about half of cases will lack this, which is really difficult, okay? So the lack of melanoma in situ does not rule out desmoplastic melanoma. But what I also want to show you about this slide is look at the diffuse S100 staining in the dermis and look on MART, totally negative except for a couple little nests up here. So in, in desmoplastic melanomas, they almost always are negative for the specific melanocyte markers like MART1 and HMB45. So S100 and SOX10 are the markers that you want to use there. So that's all the stuff I just told you. And when 90% when or more of the tumor looks like the stuff I just showed you, we call those pure desmoplastic, but sometimes they're present with epithelioid or spindle cell melanoma component, and then we say that they're a mixed or combined uh, desmoplastic. The reason that matters is that pure desmoplastic melanomas actually have a somewhat better behavior on a, on a depth by depth basis. To, to other melanomas of conventional type, um, uh, when they're the same thickness, the desmos somewhat are somewhat better, have a lower risk of metastasis, uh, but they can be quite locally aggressive. Like I've seen one grow through the skull and into the dura before, but the patient still didn't have mets. Really crazy. Very, very different behavior um, uh, from other types of melanoma. Okay, real quick point about spindle cell melanoma. Sometimes people get desmoplastic and spindle cell confused. The difference is desmoplastic should have the cells separated by that collagen in between. They should be relatively hypocellular, whereas spindle cell melanomas, basically, they look like a sarcoma. You look at this and you're like ugly spindle cells and fascicles or sheets, clearly malignant. You don't, you don't wonder that this might be a scar. So if you look at it and you think of sarcoma and then it stains like a melanoma, guess what? That's spindle cell melanoma. Okay, they they sometimes express Martin HMB45, but I but I find that oftentimes they have partial or complete loss of those markers too. So I, I regularly see spindle cell melanomas that are only S100 or SOX10 positive, and then people will want to call them a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. No, 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 no. MPNST almost never occurs in the skin, and certainly not. I would never personally call something MPNST in the sun damaged head and neck of an older person. No way. That is melanoma all across the board. Also, MPNSTs usually don't have diffuse, strong S100 and SOX10 expression. They're usually either negative or weak patchy staining, which is paradoxical. I have a whole long, like, hour and something video about MPNST. Um, where I preach about all of my favorite points about it. So if you want to learn everything and more than you wanted to know about MPNST, you can go check that out on my channel. And sometimes the spindle melanomas tend to make these packets that kind of are like something between a hybrid between a fascicle and a nest. I like to call them nesticles. 
um, if that works for you. And my residents always laugh, so I keep saying it. But whatever works for you, I hopefully didn't offend anyone.